What's going on guys? Uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, uh, my name is Ilya uh, and I've been living with MECFS for almost uh, two years already. In this video I just want to discuss one specific supplement uh, I've been researching on lately and which I believe might be somehow beneficial for people with MECFS. But before we jump into it, I want to encourage you guys to uh, join my free MECFS support group in Telegram. Uh, here you can find all of the extended versions of the materials I'm posting on my YouTube channel in a form of really um, detailed, high quality articles with all of the scientific data there, with all of the explanations of how things are working and things like that. Apart from that, I'm just, you know, sharing my personal uh, healing journey from MECFS in that Telegram channel. And what's maybe more important, I really hope to create uh, some kind of community platform for communication and sharing our experiences, um, because some of my advice may be useful to you, but I believe that you also have something to share and maybe that's how we, we can accelerate our a path to finding the right answers to, to our questions with an ECFS. So make sure to join my Telegram group and let's uh, get back to our today's topic. So now, uh, topic of today's video is going to be a supplement called Coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10, also known as Ubiquinon 10. Mm. In order to really understand what Coenzyme Q10 is, we need to understand what Coenzymes are, right? So coenzymes are just uh, some kind of helper molecules which assist our body's natural catalysts, enzymes, in various biochemical transformations, biochemical processes. Coenzyme Q10 is a fat-soluble uh, organic substance which uh, resemble uh, vitamins uh, in some way. And coenzyme Q10 can be found in inside uh, various respiring, breathing, simply speaking, eukaryotic cells and more specifically it can be found in a mitochondria cell so we know that mitochondria is our uh, main energy production cell so mitochondria is involved in the process of energy production from aerobic uh, respiration or from breathing the oxygen well now how does coenzyme q10 actually work uh, coq10 has plenty of various mechanisms of works effects benefits but not all of them are scientifically proved even uh, to the current day. But I propose to focus on what's important for us in terms of uh, MECFS. And actually, as well, it's one of the most important uh, features of coenzyme Q10, so to speak. So coenzyme Q10 contributes to the process of aerobic cellular respiration or breathing, uh, speaking simply and non-scientifically. And now aerobic cellular Respiration is basically a process of energy production from the oxygen. That's why it's called aerobic. So basically, coenzyme Q10 contributes to the process of energy production in our body. And uh, furthermore, it has some proven antioxidant uh, properties as well, which is, uh, you know, always nice to have, especially with the condition like MECFS as well. So now let's try to understand why would people with MECFS uh, would need coenzyme Q10. First of all, why anybody would need additional supplemental coenzyme Q10. So to the current day, uh, modern science know uh, three main causes of coenzyme Q10 deficiency. So it's either reduced uh, dietary intake or it's decreased inner production of coenzyme Q10 in our body or it's increased usage of coenzyme Q10. Or, of course, it can be a combination of any of these, right? But to talk specifically about the people with MECFS, we know a couple of facts which are uh, actually proven by, by uh, scientific studies, which you can find in the extended article in my Telegram channel once again, but we surely know some solid facts about coenzyme Q10 in relation to people with MECFS. So, basically, among others, we know two main things. First of all, people with MECFS have known and proven uh, impaired energy production uh, processes in their bodies. So, uh, we are talking about various mitochondrial dysfunctions, uh, impaired ATP production processes, and things like that. And more specifically, 
people with an ECFS also known to have specific coenzyme Q10 deficiencies in their bodies. So um, I'm not a scientist myself to make, make any claims, but for me it sounds more than logical that these two facts might be interconnected and that we might want to consider take additional coenzyme Q10 uh, on a daily basis. Actually, we can test for uh, coenzyme Q10 deficient, deficiency in uh, the blood serum and uh, I'm planning to do that before I start taking CoQ10. So another study uh, shows that both uh, moderate, severe and mild uh, MECFS patients have impaired energy uh, production function and basically yeah, problems with their mitochondria. So it really doesn't matter on which side of the spectrum you are at the moment. For example, I am on the milder one, but I still might have problems with energy production and with uh, coenzyme K10 deficiency. Well, now let's talk about uh, some scientific evidence in place uh, suggesting that coenzyme K10 might be beneficial for people with MECFS. And uh, the bad news here is that there is not so much high quality evidence uh, about that fact. Uh, I was able to find uh, just uh, about five, six different studies. For example, there, there were two studies uh, from Spain held in uh, 2015 and 2021 by the same group of scientists. So they were given their patients 200 milligrams of CoQ10 plus 20 milligrams of NADH plus supplement. So now NADH plus is just another chemical substance which uh, is which participates in the aerobic cellular respiration, meaning that it contributes to the energy production uh, as well as CoQ10 does. So um, over the course of eight weeks, their patients uh, reduced their uh, maximum heart rate during the cycle test, and uh, also their fatigue improved. In the other study uh, held in 2021. Also, they were given the same stack of supplements for eight weeks and uh, this decreased their fatigue, improved their sleep quality and overall quality of life. And so uh, both of the studies have um, similar flows uh, because this group of scientists from Spain is a biased group. There's a clear, a clear uh, conflict of interest in the studies because this group of people, essentially they are just working for the pharma company producing this. CoQ10 plus NADH uh, supplement. And uh, yeah, another factor is that they were given not only CoQ10, but CoQ10 plus NADH uh, supplement. So uh, we are not able to purely assess CoQ10 effectiveness in those studies. Uh, but yeah, the named effects were absorbed and we, we are just maybe need to believe them and uh, try it on ourselves. So another two overviews suggested that uh, CoQ10 plus NADH once again uh, was able to increase uh, tolerance to exercise in people and uh, basically reduce their fatigue. And another 2016 study of ubiquinol 10, uh, I want to highlight not ubiquinol but ubiquinol because ubiquinol is some other form of uh, coenzyme Q10. It's a more potent and bioavailable form. So I mean, you, you need to take about eight times less ubiquinol than coenzyme Q10 to get the same amount of this uh, substance. And so they were given ubiquinol, uh, um, ubiquinol 10 to their patients, and basically uh, they were observing improvement in several uh, CFS symptoms. So uh, that being said, there is not so much quality evidence of the effectiveness of CoQ10 uh, on MECFS patients. Um, that is why I'm not really so enthusiastic about the supplement, but uh, still I want to try it and I want to, I want to encourage you guys to try it as well and maybe it's going to be beneficial for us. So basically what positive benefits might we expect as MECFS patients uh, while taking coenzyme Q10? We might expect increasing energy levels and thus physical abilities, abilities, endurance, exercise tolerance, improvement in cognitive fatigue, uh, sleep improvement, and basically any other sporadic symptom improvement. So um, now, uh, important practical piece of the video, how to take coins and Q10. So the uh, minimally effective daily recommended dose is around 100 milligrams a day. 
one solvent and 200 milligrams a day is an observed saved level or OSL uh, according to some sources. So I personally will uh, start from uh, 100 or maybe 200 milligrams of CoQ10 per day and uh, you know just see how it goes. If I want any improvements I will try to increase my dose two or three times maybe and you now just try to find some, some balance where I do not see much side effects and I see some positive improvements. So, how long to take coenzyme Q10? Uh, well, the majority of studies were performed uh, in the time frame of between one and three months. So, I believe the minimal uh, duration of intake is going to be one month uh, to expect some positive benefits. And uh, over the course of three months, I think I'm going to be convinced that it's either working or not working at all uh, for me. So, at what time to take coenzyme Q10? Uh, it's better to take it in the morning or in the afternoon because it's reported that it can also disrupt sleep if taken uh, before the before the sleep time uh, in the night or in the evening. Then, how to mix coenzyme Q10 with food? Um, it's it's a very good question because actually it's better to take coenzyme Q10 uh, during the food intake because, like I said, coenzyme Q10 is a fat soluble substance. So, um, taking coenzyme Q10 with fatty, oily foods just increases its bioavailability and so it's, it's, it's good for us. So, uh, you can take it with uh, oils, nuts, fatty meat, fish, eggs, things like that. And also, there are some other tricks to increase the bioavailability of coenzyme Q10. Um, first of all, you can search for coenzyme Q10 in uh, oily soft gel, uh, oil-based soft gel capsules or with the black pepper extract like I do have here or just look through some other uh, water solubility additives in coenzyme Q10 which increase uh, its bioavailability and uh, the most obvious uh, path to go of course is just to take ubiquinol 10 instead of coenzyme Q10 because like I said it's like uh, up to eight times more potent, more bioavailable than coenzyme Q10. So now, of course, I need to mention some of the possible side effects of coenzyme Q10, which include uh, nausea, vomiting, appetite suppression, abdominal pain, rashes, headaches, also uh, problems with sleep if taken before the bedtime. So um, also coenzyme Q10 should be avoided in patients uh, who are currently taking warfarin due to increased risk of uh, clotting and basically the, the general disclaimer of the every material I, I put out here is to consult with your doctor first of all this video and this all of these materials are created in informational purpose only so please consult with your doctor before uh, following any of the advice stated here and before taking coins and kittens specifically. So guys, that's appear to be it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. If it was, uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my uh, MECFS support group in Telegram. And uh, see you later. Bye.